Good afternoon. This is Oliver Slope, co-founder and vice president of Blue Line Futures, headquartered at the Chicago Board of Trade. Uh, we've got a few different markets to touch on today, just a bloodbath in the outside markets. We're going to touch on that a little bit and kind of relate that to the cattle complex. But before we get into that, I do want to remind you, if you have not signed up for a free trial of our daily commodity commentary, head over to bluelinefutures.com. From there, you can select the free trial and select the markets that interest you most, whether it be grains, livestock, precious metals, energies, etc. We've got a great team that puts out great daily content each and every morning. Get that to your inbox right away. And as a brokerage client, you also have access to our 24-hour trade desk to lean on as little or as much as you need. And you also have access to a free desktop and mobile platform. And I'll be using the Blue Line Edge trading uh, platform here to go over some of today's charts, which is complimentary to brokerage clients. Uh, before we get into the charts, we'll go over the closing prices here today, starting with the grain markets. It was a, a little bit of a mixed bag. We had September corn futures up one and a quarter, new crop December up three quarters of a cent. November beans, though, that was the disappointment. Down 11.5 cents, settling at 10.64. That was about 15 cents off of the intraday high. So uh, a little bit of an ugly reversal and a poor close there as a caution flag going into Thursday's trade. On the wheat side, it was a little bit more friendly. The most actively traded September Chicago contract settled 4.25 cents higher to 5.47. And on the livestock side, uh, August live cattle, 60 cents higher as it continues to try to squeak out uh, some convergence with that cash market. Now, August does go into first notice day here in about a week and a half, so we wouldn't be surprised to see futures and cash continue to converge. Uh, but, you know, once we get past that point, I uh, would be looking for some downside protection as we turn the calendar over. But we'll get more into that a little bit later. Most actively traded October live cattle contract, 15 cents higher to 186.27. Over on the feeder side, it was a weaker tone. August feeders down a buck 62 to 257.12. The next three contract months saw larger losses than that. And on the snout side, October, the most actively traded contract, 90 cents higher to settle at 78.02. Important to note there, a nice reversal here over the last two weeks. That marked the ninth higher close in the last 10 trading sessions. All right, so we've got uh, December corn pulled up here, and we are zoomed in on the hourly chart because this is what we've done here in the recent videos is zoom in on the hourly chart so you can really see the defined trading ranges. And we did break out above the range from the last video. We defined that as 403 here on the downside to 413 on the upside. So it's going to be important to defend this 413 to 416 level going forward. That's previous resistance now going to become support going forward. Next overhead resistance from this level, we're looking at the uh, 426, 427 area, which were these highs from back on July 2nd and July 5th. We get out above there, potentially you see more short covering to retrace this breakdown point, which was the June 28th uh, quarterly USDA report. So I do think we can squeeze out a little bit more upside potential here, especially with some weather concerns kind of seeping back into the market. The 8 to 14 day uh, outlooks hotter for basically the whole country. Um, and then the precipitation forecast basically split down the middle of Illinois to the eastern side of that, near normal precipitation levels to the western side of that, uh, drier than usual is what the expectations are. So we'll see if that plays out or not, but that alone could be enough to put a little premium and maybe just spark a little bit of short covering uh, from that. Now, speaking of short covering, potential things to keep an eye on outside markets, just a bloodbath. S&P, NASDAQ down 2 and 3% respectively. Uh, a risk-off trade could be interesting for the grain markets. A risk-off trade in a lot of markets means lower, right? But funds are very heavily short the grain market, so potentially that sparks some money flow and encourages some short covering because a risk-off trade in the grains would be funds buying back short positions, and that could uh, ultimately help uh, put a little bit of a tailwind in prices as well. So something to keep uh, uh, an eye on here as we enter into tomorrow's trade, which is going to be important tomorrow. A lot of economic data. We've got uh, GDP out in the morning and PCE as well and some other economic data. So those are going to be big numbers if the outside markets continue to roll over, see how that spills over into different commodities. Now, speaking of that, cattle complex. Now, the cattle markets... You'd think the equities rolling over would be a heavy burden on cattle. Generally, you know, a day like today would be, but 
With the August contract trading at a discount to cash, we continue to believe that there might be a little bit more upside potential here, uh, but we're gonna be looking at that as an opportunity to work with clients on protecting downside risk or for those looking to take a speculative position, look at the short side. So we're looking at the October live cattle contract pulled up here. And we see a lot of overhead resistance really dating back from the start of the year, February and March, near 187 to 188. If we can get up there, I think that represents an opportunity to look to the sell side. Again, August, once you turn the calendar over, is seasonally a weaker time of year. And I've got the, the season algo chart pulled up here where you can see that over the last 5, 10, 15, 20, and 30 year averages once you roll into August. It gets tough. You get kind of past the, the peak demand season. Now, the seasonals, they aren't guaranteed. So I have to say this past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. But you've got to be aware of these things. And I think especially this year is it just seems like there's a lot more headline risk kind of lingering out there as we've gotten headlines of bird flu over the last couple of months an election coming up, uh, things of that nature, a softening economy, which I remind you is this ultimately the Federal uh, Reserve's goal. So all those things in combination kind of leave me hanging on the, on the bearish side of cattle, especially if we can get towards some of those resistance levels. Now, are we going to get a fallout like we saw last fall? Yeah, I don't think so. Looking at the commitment of traders report here over the last year, Last year at this time, funds were long about 104,000 futures and options contracts, which is a hefty long position for the funds to be holding. And that really led to a lot of long liquidation risk. Right here, we're sitting at about net long 58,000 futures and options contracts. So nearly half of the length that we were at last year. So that risk is diminished a little bit, but still, you know, 58,000 contracts is a decent chunk. And you've seen here um, at the start of the year, they were down to about 12,000. So if the equity markets continue to roll over, we get consumers maybe concerned and pinching their pockets a little bit more. Potentially that adds some pressure in a seasonally weak time of year. So those are a few things we're looking at. If you have questions over how to position or any other markets, feel free to give us a shout. My direct line, 312-837-3938, or you can email oliver at bluelinefutures.com. Remember, trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Hi, I'm Oliver Slope, Vice President and Co-Founder of Blue Line Futures. Join me on my journey for this year's Pro Farmer Crop Tour, August 21st to the 24th. Now, I'll be on the Eastern Leg, which starts in Ohio, goes through Indiana, Illinois, into Iowa, and up to Minnesota. I'll be sending out my normal daily grain market commentary as well as special updates from the findings on my route throughout the day. Now sign up for these updates by filling out the form on this page and we'll send you one of the best looking koozies around. And I love corn koozie because who doesn't love corn? Thank you and I look forward to you joining me on my journey.